Welcome to the dark and mysterious world of the Om Shinrikyo cult. Although it was first founded for peaceful purposes, Om Shinrikyo became a doomsday cult that gained notoriety in the 1990s for its involvement in a series of deadly terrorist attacks, including the infamous sarin gas attack on the Tokyo subway system. But what drove this cult to commit such heinous acts? What was their ultimate goal? And how did they convince so many people to follow their twisted ideology? Join us as we explore the enigmatic and unsettling world of Om Shinrikyo, and uncover the secrets that led to their downfall. But be warned. The truth may be darker and more unsettling than you could ever imagine. This is No. Your. Cults. Om Shinrikyo's founder, Shoko Asahara, was born Chizuo Matsumoto in 1955 in Japan. Asahara suffered an accident in 1977 that left him blind in one eye and permanently damaged his health. The accident was a turning point in his life, leading him to abandon his studies in acupuncture and Chinese medicine and to seek spiritual enlightenment. During his recovery, Asahara became interested in Eastern religions and yoga, which led him to establish his own religion. In 1984, he founded Om Shinrikyo, which was initially called Om Shinsen no Kai. The name Om comes from the Sanskrit language, and it represents the sound that Hindus and Buddhists believe represents the universe's creation. The word Shinrikyo in Japanese means Supreme Truth Sect, which emphasizes the group's focus on achieving enlightenment and salvation through their teachings. Asahara declared himself a messiah with supernatural powers and developed a following through his charismatic personality and his teachings. His beliefs were a combination of Hinduism, Buddhism, and Christianity, and he claimed that he was the only one who could save humanity from the end of the world. Asahara's religious beliefs, combined with his claims of having supernatural abilities, led to the cult's rapid growth, with thousands of members in Japan and overseas, including in Russia and the United States. As Om Shinrikyo grew in popularity, it established its headquarters in Kamakwashiki, a village in Yamanashi Prefecture, Japan. By the late 1980s, the group had an estimated 1,500 members. The membership quickly grew to around 10,000 by the early 1990s. The group's followers were highly dedicated to their leader, Shoko Asahara, whom they viewed as a messiah. Om Shinrikyo's popularity grew while its teachings focused on a combination of spiritual and physical practices, including yoga, meditation, and asceticism. In the beginning, there was a strong emphasis on science and technology, and believing that members could achieve enlightenment through technological advancements. Om Shinrikyo also engaged in various forms of charitable work, such as providing disaster relief after the Kobe earthquake in 1995, and establishing a medical clinic that provided free treatment to the poor. Furthermore, Om Shinrikyo emphasized the importance of protecting the environment and advocated for sustainable living practices. As the group gained more members and financial resources, it began investing in various businesses, including construction and pharmaceuticals. They also established branches in Russia and the United States. However, as the group grew, it became increasingly insular and isolated from mainstream society. Members were encouraged to cut ties with their families and to devote themselves entirely to the group. This led to increasing concerns about the cult's activities and intentions. In 1990, Om Shinrikyo began to shift its focus towards apocalyptic beliefs and the pursuit of political power. The cult's apocalyptic beliefs were rooted in a blend of Eastern and Western religious traditions, including Hinduism, Buddhism, and Christianity, and centered around the idea that the world was entering a period of cataclysmic change that would ultimately lead to the end of the world as we know it. Specifically, Om Shinrikyo's leader, Shoko Asahara, prophesied that a catastrophic event known as Armageddon would occur in the near future, and that the only way to survive this event was to join Om Shinrikyo and follow his teachings. Asahara claimed that he was the only one who could lead his followers to safety, and that by following him, they would be able to transcend the physical world and enter a new, spiritual realm. The group also began seeking broader public power. To pursue political power, Om Shinrikyo began to infiltrate the Japanese government and other institutions, including the media and the legal system. The group also began to stockpile weapons and conduct military-style training exercises with the goal of establishing a separate, self-sufficient community that would be able to survive the coming apocalypse. In 1993, 
Om Shinrikyo's activities took a darker turn as the group began to produce and distribute illegal drugs. The group had previously been involved in legal pharmaceutical manufacturing, but it was discovered that they were now producing illegal drugs, such as methamphetamine and LSD. It's believed that Om Shinrikyo began manufacturing illegal drugs as a way to fund their growing operations and to control their followers. Members were often given drugs as part of the cult's initiation process, which included intense meditation sessions and other physically and emotionally demanding rituals. The use of drugs was also used as a means of mind control, with members becoming dependent on the organization for their supply. While the manufacturing of illegal drugs was bad enough, this was only the tip of the iceberg for the group. Let's examine whether Om Shinrikyo qualifies as a cult. Typically, a cult is defined as a group of people who share a set of beliefs, practices, and rituals that are often centered around a charismatic leader. The beliefs of the group are often considered extreme or outside the mainstream, and the group may exhibit high levels of control over its members' behavior and beliefs. Cults often use methods of manipulation, such as brainwashing or isolation, to keep members loyal to the group and its leader. In extreme cases, cults may engage in illegal or unethical activities, such as financial fraud or physical abuse. Om Shinrikyo was widely regarded as a cult due to its extreme beliefs, practices, and the behavior of its members. The group's daily routine involved early morning meditation, chanting, and physical exercise, and members were expected to attend classes and lectures on Om Shinrikyo's teachings. They were also encouraged to devote all their time and resources to the group and were discouraged from interacting with outsiders or maintaining close relationships with family and friends outside the cult. Members were subjected to a strict hierarchy, with Shoko Asahara as the cult's leader and members expected to follow his instructions without question. Former members of the group have since provided insight into their daily lives. It was like being brainwashed. They controlled everything we did, from what we ate to what we thought. The cult leaders promised us enlightenment and eternal life, but they were really just using us for their own gain. It was like living in a different reality. The leaders told us that they had supernatural powers and could read our minds. Leaving the cult was one of the hardest things I've ever done. I had to rebuild my entire life from scratch. Om Shinrikyo's stranglehold on the lives of its members eventually expanded to public life, including acts of murder and terrorism. Om Shinrikyo's history of violence began long before anyone was ever held accountable. The group was responsible for a number of murders and attempted murders. This included the murders of members who attempted to leave the group, as well as of those investigating the group's activities. In 1989, the lawyer Tsutsumi Sakamoto, his wife, and their one-year-old son were murdered by Om Shinrikyo members. Sakamoto was a prominent critic of the cult and was investigating their activities at the time of his murder. Sakamoto was investigating Om Shinrikyo's activities as a lawyer for a group of parents who were trying to regain custody of their adult children who had become members of the cult. Sakamoto was also a vocal critic of the cult and had spoken out against them publicly, which made him a target for Om Shinrikyo. The murder was carried out by the group's members, including the leader Shoko Asahara, who ordered the killing. Asahara believed that Sakamoto posed a threat to the cult and its activities, and saw him as a major obstacle to their pursuit of political power. Several cult members were eventually arrested and charged with the murder, including Asahara himself. But the trial was long and complex, with many delays and legal challenges. It wasn't until 2004, 15 years after the murder, that the final verdict was reached. In the end, several cult members, including Asahara, were convicted and sentenced to death for their role in the murder. Tragically, in the 15 years before the group was brought to justice, their violence escalated to horrifying levels. On March 20, 1995, Om Shinrikyo carried out one of the deadliest terrorist attacks in Japanese history, releasing sarin gas in the Tokyo subway system during the morning rush hour. The attack killed 13 people and injured over 5,000 others. But this was not the first time that Om Shinrikyo had used sarin gas in a terrorist attack. In fact, 
the cult had been experimenting with the deadly nerve agent for years, carrying out several smaller attacks before the Tokyo subway attack. In 1994, Omshin Rikyo members released sarin gas in the city of Matsumoto, killing seven people and injuring over 500 others. The cult had targeted a group of judges who were living in a residential complex near the attack site. In preparation for the Tokyo attack, Om Shinrikyo members produced large quantities of sarin gas and tested it on a remote island. They also acquired a fleet of vehicles and coordinated a complex plan to simultaneously release the gas on several subway trains during rush hour. On the day of the attack, Om Shinrikyo members, carrying packages containing the sarin gas, boarded five different subway trains. They punctured the packages with sharpened umbrella tips and left them on the floor of the trains before exiting at different stations. The gas quickly spread throughout the subway system, causing widespread panic and chaos. First-hand accounts paint a picture of horror. I felt my eyes burning and my throat constricting. I couldn't breathe. I was terrified. I saw people writhing in pain on the ground, foaming at the mouth. It was like a scene from a horror movie. I couldn't move my legs. I was completely paralyzed. I thought I was going to die. The smell was so strong, like burning rubber. My eyes started watering and I felt a burning sensation in my throat. The motivation behind the sarin gas attacks was the cult's apocalyptic beliefs, as well as their desire to gain political power and influence. Om Shinrikyo's leader, Shoko Asahara, had prophesied that the attacks would trigger a global war that would bring about the end of the world and allow the cult to establish a new society based on their own beliefs. After the attack, the Japanese government launched a massive investigation into Om Shinrikyo's activities, eventually arresting hundreds of cult members and leaders. Shoko Asahara was eventually captured and sentenced to death for his role in the attacks and other crimes. The sarin gas attacks had a profound impact in Japan, leading to a heightened awareness of the dangers posed by religious cults and extremist groups. According to journalist Koichi Hame, The sarin gas attack was a shock to Japanese society. It shattered the myth of Japan as a safe country and it made people realize that terrorism could happen anywhere. The attacks also had a lasting impact on the victims and their families, many of whom continue to suffer from the physical and emotional trauma inflicted by the cult's actions. The sarin gas attacks brought an end to Om Shinrikyo's reign of terror, as the Japanese government cracked down on the cult's activities and arrested hundreds of its members. But the impact of Om Shinrikyo's actions continues to be felt to this day. In the aftermath of the attacks, the Japanese government passed several new laws aimed at cracking down on extremist groups and preventing future attacks. These included new regulations on the production and storage of hazardous chemicals, as well as stricter penalties for terrorist activities. The impact of Om Shinrikyo's actions also had a significant cultural impact on Japan. The attacks shook the country's sense of security and led to a widespread distrust of religious cults and extremist groups. The media coverage of the attacks and the subsequent investigation also raised questions about the role of the media in reporting on terrorism and the need for responsible journalism. Several high-ranking members of Om Shinrikyo were convicted and sentenced to prison for their roles in the cult's various crimes. Shoko Asahara, the cult's leader, was sentenced to death and executed by hanging in 2018. Many other cult members received long prison sentences. In the years since the attacks, there have been several movies, books, and documentaries produced about Om Shinrikyo and their actions. The cult has become a subject of fascination and study in academic circles, as experts try to understand how such a group could emerge and carry out such devastating attacks. After Om Shinrikyo technically disbanded in 2000, two splinter groups emerged, Hikari no Wa and Aleph. Hikari no Wa was founded by Fumihiro Joyu, who was once a close aide to Om Shinrikyo's leader, Shoko Asahara. After Asahara's arrest, Joyu left the cult and began a more moderate spiritual movement, which he called Hikari no Wa, meaning, circle of light. The group practices a form of Buddhism that emphasizes meditation and self-reflection, and seeks to promote peace and harmony in the world. They reject violence and extremism, and have condemned Om Shinrikyo's actions. Aleph, on the other hand, was formed by some of Om Shinrikyo's more hardline members who refused to disband after the cult's collapse. 
the group still practices some of Om Shinrikyo's teachings and rituals, but claims to have renounced violence and terrorism. They have changed their name several times and are currently known as Aleph. The group has been monitored closely by Japanese authorities and is considered a potential security threat. Today, Hikari no Wa and Aleph still exist, but they are not widely known or active in the public sphere. They continue to be monitored by Japanese authorities, who are concerned about the potential for extremist activity or violence. However, neither group has engaged in any significant or notable action since the disbandment of Om Shinrikyo. Overall, the fall of Om Shinrikyo and the impact of their actions continue to be felt in Japan and around the world. The cult serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of religious extremism and the importance of vigilance in preventing terrorism. Let us know in the comments below what cult, sect, or secret society you want to learn about next. Please consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel to hear more horrifying true stories from around the world. Thank you for watching. Until next time.